All right, so picture this. You're managing a team with multiple projects and deadlines, and you're not just balancing what's happening now, but you've got to keep track of everything that's coming down the pipeline. And then you're expected to report all of this information to senior leaders in a way that they can understand at a glance. Okay, no problem. Today I'm going to show you how to create a simple resource tracker in Excel that doesn't just keep tabs on your team's current workload, it also helps you to forecast future assignments and visually presents this information in dashboards for stakeholders and senior leaders. There'll be a downloadable version of the tool, I'll share more details about that later. I'm leaning into simplicity here. I want this tool to be easy to read and use because the more complex it is, the more intimidating it becomes and the less likely that you or anyone will want to use or maintain it. So whether you're running a project or a program or managing a change team or just managing a big crew across a bunch of different assignments, this is going to be the simple, elegant tool you'll wish you always had. Okay, open up your Excel file. Let's just list the months across the top here. I'll let it run for about one and a half years, but this can go on for as long as you need. I'll merge the cells above the months so I can add a year. A little light formatting. I'm just gonna add a few more columns to work with. I'm putting the project resource name and role columns here. You can add more if you need. Sometimes you'll need to add portfolio name, program name, work stream name. I've added some random project names along with some resource names. Let me know in the comments if you spot where they came from and allocated some roles for them. So far, nice and simple. Three projects, eight resources. Just an observation, but you'll see some resource trackers out there that would want you to use actual days in the cells that our resources are being allocated to. In some cases, they'll want hours. The idea then is that you can calculate exactly how much time a resource is worth on a project within a time frame. That's great, and I'm not attacking the approach, but my preference is to use a percentage of the resource's time. It's still possible to calculate their costs from that, but it's an easier figure to understand. Telling you that someone's allocated for 100% or 50% is probably easier for you to immediately grasp its meaning than by saying, they're allocated for 37.5 hours. Ah, but what if the resource is part-time or does a four-day week? Assuming they're not working compressed hours, in which case the percentage score still works, you can just add a row under the project name non-working time and put their non-working percentage into there. So long as the total adds up to 100%, you'll still understand at a glance the level of capacity the resource has available. And you can also use non-working time to cover things like vacations and other time off. Now I'm adding some filters across the columns. Highlight the column titles, go to data at the top of the page and hit filter. As you can see, I can now filter to just see what I want from a column. In this case, let's just filter to miles. We can see he's assigned to two projects. Let's suppose that Titan doesn't start until June 2025. So let's put him on 100% for Project X until then. At that point, he's going to gradually increase his allocation on Titan and reduce on Project X. If you're paying attention, you'll notice I've made a mistake here. Miles is over allocated in a couple of months, but there's no way to tell yet. I'm gonna unfilter this and I'm gonna add a row called totals. In reality, the formula that we use is called subtotal. That way, when we filter the resource name, it'll only show what's allocated to that resource. Let's test this. I'll allocate the same pattern of work Miles is using to Deborah, just using the copy and paste. You'll notice the totals have increased. But let's filter to Miles again and see what happens. You see the totals are just showing Miles allocation and we can see clearly that he's at 110% capacity in June and July. Now we can change those figures. Keep in mind Deborah has the same error but I'll leave that uncorrected for now. I'm going to quickly add some allocations to the rest of the team to complete the sheet. Now we have a very busy looking team but it's hard for anything to leap off the page and warn us of problems. We can see that December onwards looks busy from the totals, 
but it's hard to really understand what that means at an individual level. One way is to look into the individual resources and see if the subtotal warns us of trouble ahead. Filtering on Buddy, I can see that he's completely unallocated until October, then he's underallocated for two months, and then he's way over capacity from December onwards. As the manager, this tells you you need to find something for Buddy to do for nine months, but also to take the pressure off him in later months. Does this mean that you bring Titan forward and start work sooner? Or do you find something unrelated for Buddy to work on? As the manager, I guess that's up to you. This is helpful, so remember to subscribe for more helpful videos. But at the moment, all we have is a lot of data on a page, and I doubt that your stakeholders are going to get a lot from just looking at it, even if they've got the patience to use the filters. So we need to make it even easier to use. I'm going to create a new worksheet in a moment, so to avoid confusion later on, I've renamed the sheet we've been working on as Resource Data, and now I'll create a new worksheet called Dashboard. On this page, I'll want the months again and the resource names. I'll just copy and paste those details across and remove the duplicates. Now I want this dashboard to give us the total allocation per resource. This involves writing and copying a SUMIFS formula. Don't worry, we'll go slowly. Firstly, I want to know how many hours are allocated to miles in January 2025. So in that cell, I'll type equal SUMIFS and open parentheses. It wants a sum range, so I'll go back to the resource data and drag down all the allocations in January and press comma. Now for the criteria range. This is the column with the resource names, so I'll drag down all of the names and hit comma. Finally, it needs the criteria, so I go back to the dashboard and select the cell with Miles's name and close parentheses and hit enter. So what was all that about? Well, we told Excel to look for the name Miles in the resource name list and to sum all the allocations in January. Now we need the formula to work on the rest of the months and the rest of the names in the team. We don't want to re-enter that formula in every single cell, but if we try to copy it across, we'll get errors. We need to fix the formula so we can copy it. Don't worry, this isn't as hard as it sounds. Just follow me. And if you get really stuck, you can download my version later on and pick it apart as much as you like. If we drag and copy the January formula into February, we can see immediately it doesn't work. The values changed in the formula. It's okay for the month values to change because it's now looking at January in the resource data, but the big problem is it's not using Miles' name as the criteria. So let's fix that first. We add dollar signs to fix parts of the formula. We need to do that in the criteria range, the list of the names and the criteria itself, Miles' name. So far, so good, but let's test it by changing some of the data in the resource data sheet. It's changed, so it's all looking good. But if we copy it across to all resources, it goes wrong again. The resource data is getting messed up, so we need to lock those row numbers too. Back to the formula with more dollar signs. It looks good, but let's double check. Monica is on 20 in November, then 120 onwards. Let's filter to see if that's the case on the resource data sheet. It is, success. Now that dashboard does tell us more at a glance. We can see massive under and over allocations quite easily, but can we improve it? Can we make it more visually powerful so that you can understand it at a glance? Yes, we can. Highlight the cells in the table and go to home and conditional formatting. Hit the drop down and go to color scales. Find a version that appeals to you. I personally like this variation that highlights in darker shades of red any over allocation and green for any under allocations. With a few cosmetic enhancements, this can be copied and pasted to any deck or document that you're sharing or presenting, making it really easy for your stakeholders to understand the resource situation on your project and it's editable. You can present this and your board will start pointing out that there's so much red on here that poor Buddy is overworked. In that same meeting, you can say fine and return to Buddy in the resource data sheet and fix his numbers, showing their immediate change in the dashboard. So there it is, your own resource tracker that not only helps you to manage your team's workload, but also gives you a clear visual view of capacity 
that you can drop straight into your reports or dashboards. No fancy software, just a practical Excel tool to help you stay organized and keep your stakeholders in the loop. And if you struggle to keep up with any of that demo, you could just watch it again, which is good for my ad revenue. Or better still, you can download a copy of the tool itself and have a play with that. There's a link in the description. If this video has helped you to bring some order to your resource management, let me know by hitting that thumbs up button. And if you find that you need a Gantt chart in Excel, I've got a great video here that shows you how to get Excel to build it for you.